Hello everyone, in this video we will learn about fundamentals of the analysis of algorithm efficiency. The algorithm efficiency can be analyzed with the following ways. First of all, analysis framework, asymptotic notations and its properties. Next, uh, mathematical analysis of recursive algorithm. And finally, mathematical analysis for non-recursive algorithms. First, learn about analysis framework there are two kinds of efficiency one is time efficiency and the space efficiency time efficiency and space efficiency and uh, what do you mean by time efficiency you're going to check how fast the algorithm runs and uh, space efficiency is indicating how much extra memory it uses how much extra memory it uses so there are two kinds of efficiency, time efficiency and space efficiency. Space efficiency is deals with the memory used by a program and uh, time efficiency is deals with the uh, time used by the algorithm for running or completion of its task. The algorithm analysis framework consists of the following measuring an input size, units for uh, measuring running time, orders of growth, First case, best case and average case, efficiency, how to calculate this. So, in this uh, video, we will mainly concentrate on these four topics. Let's now understand measuring an input size. Algorithm efficiency is defined as the function of some parameter in indicating the algorithm's input size. But, finding the algorithm input size is, is not always a straightforward one okay uh, most of the cases it is so for example if you consider a sorting and searching problem sorting and searching problem we can easily find the input size that is the number of elements but if you consider the evaluation of polynomial in that case in that case the size of the parameter will be polynomial's degree or the number of its coefficients so then if you consider product of n cross n matrix then the parameter is input size that is n cross n okay then if you consider a spell checking algorithm spell checking algorithm then the size is measured by the number of character if you consider the uh, to consider the problem of finding the number of bits in the n's binary representation because if you take 2, the provider representation uh, is 1, 0, then 1, 0, then the total number of bits is your for uh, n uh, that is 2 is 2. Okay. Suppose if I take 8, 8, then it is 1, 0, 0. So number of bits here is 2. So here the input size is not straightforward like sorting and searching it is based on the number of bits so v is represented as you have to find in this manner log into the base 2 plus 1 so these are the ways differently uh, uh, for some it is straightforward so for finding the uh, input sizes for some problems it's straightforward and some are not next units for measuring running time Units for measuring running rates cannot be re, uh, represented using seconds or minutes or some other um, unit. But here, we are the approach to uh, represent the uh, running time is count the number of times each of the algorithm's operation is executed. But it's not that easy. Okay. It's not that easy and you can say that it's not worth finding uh, the number of times, number of times uh, executed, executed. Okay. So, we cannot consider all of the operations. So, we'll consider 
some operation, some important operation, okay, some important operation and we can call that important operation as basic operation. What ways we can say that it is a basic operation, which is more time consuming operations. We can say that that operation need to be more time time consuming operations or I can tell that you have to identify that operation in the algorithm which is running more number of times okay which is number uh, running more num uh, maximum number of times in the uh, program so such a operation we need to find and that operation is called as basic operation so you need to identify that operation so total uh, running time is normally normally determined by basic operation count so we can write a total running time we can tell in this format this is this is the representation for total running time which will be approximately equal to approximately equal to the execution time of an algorithm basic operation this is nothing but execution time of an algos basic operation so i can tell running time is approximately equal to execution time of an algorithm's basic operation let's now learn about order of growth what is orders of growth orders of growth is going to give us the relationship between the relationship between the input size input size and the running time of the algorithm now one thing you can observe in the table that here this row represents the input size this row represents the input size and this is the running time running time so based on the input size what is the running time that is represented here what if n is 1 and the running time is represented as square root of n then what's the value if the running time is log n what's the value all these are represented and one thing you can observe as the input size increases as the input size increases okay time consumed also gets increases time consumed also gets increases you can see that if the input size is 10 to the power see here we have written for 2 to the power and that is exponential we can we have written it's a very big uh, computation that's a very com big computation so one thing you can observe clearly as the input size increases even the time consumed also gets increased everywhere in all kinds of uh, running time Now, I can tell that finally, order of growth is nothing but order in which the time increases. It's order in which the time increases with respect to input is called as order of growth. It's called as order of growth. What's order of growth? You can tell that order in which time increases with respect to input. Now, let's understand about worst case, best case, average case efficiencies by considering the algorithm linear search that or sequential search what is linear search or sequential search you are sequentially uh, searching for the key k in the list of elements if you find the uh, key k in the list of elements then you are going to uh, return the position of that element in the list if you do not find the element in the list of elements then you are going to return minus 1 which indicates that it is not uh, it's not present in the list okay i'm starting with the algorithm it's the first line of the algorithm that's the heading algorithm and then sequential search and what what you're going to input for the sequential search you need array of elements to and a key Without these two elements, you can't proceed with a sequential search. Okay, then the aim of the algorithm after that input, input is nothing but array of elements and the key k. 
and then the output output is nothing but index you are going to return index okay then uh, let me start consider an example example where n is 3 n is 3 10 20 and 30 this is the array a and the position of these are starts from 0 1 and 2 okay and then the key i'm going to consider so as you know that uh, the sequential search requires two input one is array of elements and one is key key i'm going to give as 20 initially i is 0 i start from here i is 0 then while while is going to keep updating the i ith position ith position if the condition is true so i is less than i is initially 0 i is 0 is less than n what is n 3 and a of 0 is not equal to k a of 0 is not equal to k what is a of 0 a of 0 is 10 so 10 is not equal so i will be incremented so i becomes 1 so if i is 1 then again 1 is less than 3 i less than n 1 is less than 3 and and a of 1 whether it is not equal to key a of 1 is 20 which is equal to key element okay so if so what you are going to do from while loop you will not execute the statements that is part of the while loop instead of that you will start jump as the while condition fails you are going to jump to control will be transferred to this line if i is less than n yes so what's the i value we got last time that is 1 so 1 is less than n 1 is less than n so return i return i so return i is nothing but return one. this value so i's value was 1 so return that value so what is this value that is as i told output will be index of the element if it appears in the list yes 20 appears in the list and what's the position of it that is one uh, that I am going to return return i okay else yes, return minus one that is about sequential search uh, now let's understand the case different cases for this particular algorithm first of all worst case efficiency when you can say that worst case efficiency worst case efficiency say that for the longer period of time you will be running the algorithm for what input when the uh, algorithm runs for the longer duration so algorithm can run for the longer duration okay longer duration that if that means your sequence search has to run for this element this element and even a for this element even it has to visit all the elements in the array all the elements in the array so c worst of n first case of this function is this algorithm is n when it runs for when it checks for all the elements in the list okay so that is the first case next best case when it can be a best case for a sequential search if you take the element 10 20 and 30 when you can see the best case best case is when you will find the element in the smaller duration okay that is only possible only possible if your key element appears to be in the first element so C best case of n is 1. Okay. If your first element itself is your search key, then you can say that running time or the best case of program is algorithm is 1. Now we will find average case efficiency. What is average case efficiency? It is the amount of time used by the algorithm averaged over all possible inputs so algorithm case uh, sorry average case efficiency normally lies between best case and worst case 
so how are we going to calculate it so we are going to assume that uh, the key what you are searching it can be present in the first place uh, place or this in the second position or the third position or nth position it can be present anywhere so this can be searched in the probabilistic manner so for that C average of n can be represented as in a two manner one in a su successful search manner as well as in the unsuccessful manner so probability of a successful search is equal to p that is it can be present the probability value can be present between 0 and 1 okay so So 1 it can be present in the first position out of n elements or it can be present in second position and so on it can be present in the nth position okay so this is the successful search of a n element next unsuccessful search the probability is 1 minus p so that is for the n l nth element so n into 1 minus p so which is nothing but p by n you can so here p by n is common so it can be represented 1 plus 2 plus and so on up till n plus n into 1 minus p so this is for unsuccessful search and this is for a successful search now what is p by n into 1 plus 2 plus n so this can be represented as 1 plus 2 plus and so on n can be represented as n into n plus 1 divided by 2 so plus n into 1 minus p n into 1 minus p so which is represented as p into which is equal to p into n plus 1 divided by 2 plus n into 1 minus p so this is for the this is the average case efficiency